when I heard you talking about Apophos a couple nights ago, I was like, yeah, dude, um, that totally syncs with this weird art bell call. And back in 97, this, this guy called into a show and was like, he sounded paranoid, he sounded freaked out. He's, uh, he's talking about how... nothing in the show should be considered legal medical or financial advice the views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion dex's opinion or anyone else who works with the show you should always do your own research and consult with professionals the internet is full of fake news so please take everything with a grain of salt if you haven't already you can get long-term survival food which is one of the best things to get from marfuglenews.com slash prep all of the food has a 25 plus year shelf life and they have it packaged in really convenient packages you can get a 72 hour kit that you you can just throw in your bag. Uh, you can even get a three-month kit right now at 20% off. There's all sorts of deals, so make sure to go over to marfuglenews.com slash prep. Not only are you getting a discount on it, but you are also helping our channel. So it's a win-win for everybody. You're supporting independent media, and you're getting prepared at the same time. All right, uh, Dex, let's get Tito on the phone. Tito, are you there? Bar, man, long-time listener, dude. Love your show. Thanks for having me on. All right, well, so you wanted to talk about uh, pop control and aliens and uh, the weird Art Bell caller, and I'm pretty sure I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, dude. So, I don't know how many of your listeners uh, used to listen to Art Bell, but they can find the video on YouTube either. Um, when I heard you talking about Apophos a couple nights ago, I was like, yeah, dude, um, that totally syncs with this weird art bell call that occurred in like 1997 um for you for you guys who don't know who art bell is he was a syndicated uh, talk show radio host massively popular back in the day and back in 97 this this guy called into his show and was like he sounded paranoid he sounded freaked out he's uh he's talking about how you know he used to work in area 51 with, uh, ufos and how uh, aliens were interdimensional beings um you know, interacting with our government and, you know, like the uh, deep state or whatever. And, you know, he goes on to say that, you know, the government knows from these extraterrestrials that eventually there's going to be mass um, impact uh, natural disasters that take out huge population zones. And the government can, you know, he goes on to say, he sounds like all paranoid and stuff. You're, you're wondering, like, you know, is, is this guy like, is this guy crazy or what? But... He goes on to say, you know, right before the call gets knocked off uh, off the air, that the government knows about this, but they just don't want to do anything about it because uh, I guess uh, they would uh, prefer to have a uh, smaller population and uh, because it'd be more easily controllable. And then, you know, he starts bawling, and he just gets taken off the air right after that, inexplicably. You know, it never happens to the Art Bell show again where some dude just gets taken off the air. Apparently, we never hear from that guy again. So, I don't know. I just wanted your take on that call and what you think about that, what's going on today with the Pothos, uh Comet, uh, and all of these natural disasters. You know, mind you, this guy called back in, like, 97. So, it's like, now you see what's going on in 2022. So, I mean, well, I, and I thought it would be funny if, as you were describing the call, I just muted it out, cut, cut like, you know, it hung up, and then you hear like beep. <laughs> I, I wasn't going to do that to you, but uh, it, it, that call is it is freaky because if he is an actor, he is one of the best actors out there because he genuinely sounds scared. If you haven't heard the call he's talking about, it's it's like hold on, it's literally like if if you are into this kind of stuff, then that should have been like your day one kind of stuff. The call he's he's. You know, and then, oh, and then Art Bell, how Art Bell responded to the call getting dropped is like, I've never had this in my years on the radio. You know, it, it's, uh, it, I, we can't get him back on and he, he's just gone. You know, it, it, was, it was just the whole call was weird. It's been a few years since I listened to it, but it is such a freaky call. And I didn't even think about that. He did talk about all these natural disasters and things happening. I, I just and now I want to re-listen to it. Uh, we'll attach it on our website so people uh, can find it. Gosh, think about that. Think about if if uh, think about if that guy was right. Yeah, I don't know, dude. I mean, seriously, it was it was very weird. And you know, you know that the government, you know, you know they interact 
with these extraterrestrials, whatever they are. But you know, with Area 51 and, you know, how, how secretive they are, you know, there's got to be something a lot more to it. And then, you know, to get a call like that, to be bumped off the air and then see all these things happening, I don't know. I thought that was weird. But I don't know. What do you think? I mean, do you think the government interacts with extraterrestrials, Mark? Do you think, like, they know that, yeah, you know, you know, something's going to hit Earth or these people are doomed. These people are, you know, they're toast. Do you think maybe that's why they're getting off the Earth right now? And Elon Musk, they're going to Mars and the moon. I mean, well, my per- like some apocalyptic stuff. To talk about. My personal opinion is I, I actually do believe that there is an asteroid hitting toward heading towards earth and nobody wants to say that kind of thing because then people will label you and say oh this guy thinks an asteroid's gonna hit i don't think that why that's so unbelievable um if it's not uh, as far as aliens the last couple years how it's now been pushed and pushed and pushed it almost kind of it gives me the vibes of like a a fake alien invasion type thing needs to to hit uh, to can you know control uh that you know that's always been a theory for years I don't 100% believe that... Oh, I I 100% believe that they're doing secretive things. And if there is some sort of uh, being that, you know, normal people don't know about, then I most definitely think it would have been... uh, They've been in contact or had some sort of deal with for years. Uh, But I also think that those could be like, you know, fallen angels. They could be all sorts of things. And that sounds crazy. The thing I I 100% believe, though... I think they, and it's hard to say because people don't want you to say 100% say this. I think that there is an asteroid heading towards Earth. That's that's what I think. And that's from the big picture of looking at what they're doing. But again, maybe the and the alien thing could be a, a distraction from it all. I don't know. Have you have you read uh, Tom Horn's book uh, that was called, called Wormwood Prophecy? It, um, it's this, this dude, I guess, had like a near-death experience and spoke with God. And um, apparently, like, God told him, like, hey, man, there's going to be a comet. This was years and years ago. There's going to be a, a comet called Apophos, and it's going to hit the, uh, Earth in, like, 2029. And he made that revelation, I guess, like, years and years prior to, like, NASA now talking about they're going to send some rockets to try getting, like, try to experimenting on this on this uh, Apophos uh, asteroid. I mean, that's just wild, but anyway, crazy story. Uh, check it out. It's Tom Horn's uh, book. Um, it's I guess it's like a, a national bestseller. Uh, like on New York Times for it. It's called Tom Horn's Wormwood Prophecy. If you haven't read it, check it out. Amazing stuff. If you truly believe that that's going to hit Earth, and I'm pretty darn certain it is too. It just seems like that's where it's going right now with what NASA's doing. Um, I think that book would just fascinate you. And your well, with DART uh, and Osiris Rex and all of these missions, uh, on the cover it says NASA, Donald Trump, and a cosmic cover-up of end-time proportions. Um, when was this wrote again? Did you say this is way before they named it Apophis? Uh, not before they named it, but be- way years before they started uh, talking about it way before NASA started kind of giving it a name in the media, saying, okay, well, we got our eyes on it, and now we're going to start maybe experimenting with sending a nuclear bomb to try maybe seeing if we can get off for it. It just seems really, it, it, it's really interesting. It's well, really look at the time frame. Also, uh, in 2029 is right. when, when it, suppo- it was supposedly going to hit originally, and there, there was actual... Uh, you know, news stories that came out and said, this is going to hit us in 2029. And then they said, no, 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 sorry, the data was wrong. Isn't isn't that what happened with Apophis is the yeah. data was changed? Or, I'm sorry, that it was updated. Yeah, yeah inexplicably. Like, uh, they're just, you know, they, they just decided to change their narrative. And that just, it just made it, like, even weirder. Like, what? Like, okay, like, if it wasn't, Weird enough to be. <laughs> and the don't anyway, look dude, up, yeah, so don't glad, look uh, up. The whole yeah. weird similarities there, but also uh, uh, T Man, our ex president, starting Space Force, and it was like, what the heck was? Wh- uh, nobody, everybody made fun of it because it was him, but now it's still around, and now everyone is like, yeah, Space Force. Like, we started a Space Force, 
And of course, they're going to say, oh, well, it's because our enemies are, uh, are uh, you know, militarizing space, but that at the same time, we're still doing business with all these enemies. And everybody's doing these projects together in the international space community. They're all doing projects together. You have, uh, you know, Chinese government uh, right. space agencies doing work with our agencies. If these are really our enemies, why are we playing friend to or something? But they're all working together on these space projects. Uh only now they're separating, you know, uh, different... It, it's almost like, what if they're separating the space stations because they're each like, well, you got to take care of yourself. So when this happens, uh, you'll have your evacuation ship. You'll have your evacuation ship. Uh, we'll have ours. You know, all of the main countries are going to have some sort of satellite, almost like a Noah's Ark. They're going to build a five-mile-long uh, structure in space. Like, what the hell is that about? Why? Why do they? Why are they developing a artificial moon satellite thing? Why are they developing all these stuff? Maybe because where we're moving doesn't have one. I I, I, they, I know a lot of people are going to think I'm crazy, but I I hear you. Yeah, it is crazy, and you know you got to wonder too. You know, for the people who think we're crazy and are listening to the show, you know, you got to wonder. You know, if if we're so crazy, then what is up with all these increased sightings of asteroids coming into our atmosphere? You saw the one in Russia. Uh, you see the one in Arizona in this uh, in my state. I mean, these things, you know, they are. There's increased instances of seeing these, uh, albeit small, uh, uh, you know, meteors coming into our atmosphere, but they're increasing little by little. And I don't. I just find that uh, complete. Uh, terrifying <laughs> but uh crazy or not dude i don't know it just it just seems like something is going down i mean trump during his inaugural address too he was talking about unlocking the secrets and mysteries of space in his inaugural address if you didn't uh catch that uh i suggest anyone who's interested in that kind of stuff listen to it um it's weird the kind of language he was using um, but yeah, and dude, now I don't know. just just um, yesterday, but, um, our president yeah. said we're looking at a, a Armageddon. Uh, you know, the, this is the closest yeah. we've gotten to an Armageddon, and I'm just wondering if there's like little signals out there. If the president actually says Armageddon, is that a signal to the people in the know saying like, "Hey, it's about to go down"? Like, why would why would a president ever say Armageddon? I, that freaks everybody out. It panics everybody. I, why would you say that? Is this like you know that the so. group the the, <laughs> the the Grove that meets, you know, did they agree at one last of the, one of the Grove meetings that like you know I'll say Armageddon on a, a public speech and that will be the sign or something? Because <laughs> it's so out of place. Who says and, that? And, and, yeah, and and the way he said it too. The way he said it. You know, if you're talking about like Armageddon, you know, literally the end of the earth is some apocalyptic scenario. You're gonna want to kind of stay with some an urgency and maybe you're a little scared and frightened but you just say kind of so nonchalantly you know what i mean just like huh, it's uh, it's an armageddon type scenario guys i don't know i mean it just seemed like it seemed like something like maybe he knew he had some prior information on that you know but uh yeah i know what you mean um you know the powers that be i think you know they've they've been they've been kind of more vocal and more more nonchalant about it i think they've known it for years if not decades what was going to happen i think now they're just kind of like uh, you know i don't care i'm just going to say it and i'm going to mention it and <laughs> well we're all dead anyway right i think i think that's the way it sounds when you hear mr b say it like that with a little chuckle and a smile on his face i, I just it to me it translates into yeah <laughs> uh you guys are all screwed and um you know i'll, I'll see you guys burning from space i don't know I pray to God that's not the case, but it just it just seems like it's kind of getting. Well, Tito, what a great call! Uh, this is three great first-time callers in a row. I hope you guys aren't strangers. Please call us back, okay? I would love to hear from you again. Oh, I will. I will. Thank you, Marv. This has been a pleasure, dude, and I love your show. You take care, man. God bless. And Tito, please, if you find other stuff that fits into you know into that theory, will you please give me a call back and e e email me too? If you find something new, that's the stuff I'm most fascinated into. Is any little sign that would that would make me feel a little bit less crazy? I would appreciate it. So thank you. Oh, for sure, man.
three sets. Uh, go read it. It's out on Amazon, guys. All right. <laughs> we'll, we'll, it's a lot, uh, a lot, it's a lot less crazy. We'll, all right. Love you guys. We'll put links bye. to it. All right. Bye-bye. If you haven't already, you can protect yourself against electromagnetic pulse. We have talked about EMPs and CMEs a lot here because it is one of the biggest things that people are prepping for. Uh, there is a company that can actually outfit your cars, your motorcycles, and your home. Even your ham radio can get an EMP shield, a protection for it. This can actually protect against all three phases of an EMP, E1, E2, and E3, and it can protect against a Carrington level event. So make sure to go to marfuglenews.com slash E-M-P. Feed the haters to the alligators. Your weight or the highway. See you later. B-O-D is the homie and Mr. Vader. If it wasn't for you, I would never made it. Whole city's covered by the cremated. Now they listen to what we were saying. Doesn't matter if my manufacturer or created. But now...